Hello, everybody. This is Alex. Um, I am recording the lecture for week two for English 120, um, Introduction to Canadian Indigenous Literature. Uh, this lecture is on Drew Hayden Taylor's Cottagers and Indians. So last time we talked about the Introduction to Drama lecture and what makes up um, drama, what constitutes drama. Um, so I gave you some information about how to tell what a drama is. Um, and now we can actually apply that knowledge to a text. So the first thing that we're going to look at is um, Cottagers and Indians by Drew Hayden Taylor. So that's this book right here. Um, you can sort of see it um, that there's two actors on the front and that um, that's the title. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and hopefully we can um, get this show on the road. Okay, so Cottagers and Indians by Drew Hayden Taylor. Um, I chose this story because I have read and taught Drew Hayden Taylor's plays before, um, including two of his plays that were um, sort of connected. Um, one was called um, Baby Blues, and the other one was called Berlin Blues. Um, it's a play on the blues theme, anyways. So this one I thought would be a good one to start because it's humorous and also addresses some very important First Nations issues. So that's why I wanted to start with this, this um, play is because it addresses some very interesting issues and I think that we can have some good discussions from this, um, from this play. So the first thing is Drew Hayden Taylor is the author of Cottagers and Indians. He is um, from Curve Lake First Nations in central Ontario. So he is um, Ojibwe, um, which is one of the Anishinaabe nations. Um, he is a playwright, an author, a columnist, and a lecturer, although I know him best as a playwright um, just from reading Berlin Blues and Baby Blues, et cetera. Um, and actually this play, Cottagers and Indians, was born of a real life conflict. Um, one of Drew Hayden Taylor's friends actually um, is taking part in um, this sort of wild rice growing protest um, and is trying to um, have an activist sort of idea of of Lake Country in um, Ontario. So that should be an interesting aspect of what we're looking at. So just to start, I wanted to read this quotation by Drew Hayden Taylor. So I love to explore and teach through humor. Based on my experience with other storytellers, other storytellers, it is our way. Yes, this play has a lot of anger in it a lot of history, even some sadness, but humor is the focal point of much of what happens. I read somewhere that one of the best ways to understand a people is through what makes them laugh. Sounds good to me. So that's what Drew Hayden Taylor says about his own work. Um, so when you're looking at this um, play, it has two characters, only two characters, Arthur Copper, who is an Indigenous man in his late 40s, and Maureen Poole, a well-to-do non-Indigenous woman in her mid-50s. Um, so those are the only two characters in this play. No, no other characters actually appear in order to talk. So it's just these two. So the setting is very interesting, I think. Um, there are two universes on this stage. On one side is a typical Ontario cottage environment, preferably a dock with a barbecue and a Muskoka chair. On the other side, a canoe in close proximity to um, a cattails and picturesque shoreline. So 
this um, is the way that the stage is set up. So if you recall, when I was talking about staging the other day, um, there are several ways that you can set up a stage. And in this case, it's um, split in two down the middle. So on one side is uh, Maureen Poole in her Muskoka chair. And on the other side is Arthur Copper with his canoe. So um, this is sort of like an interesting way of setting up um, the stage. Um, so I have some questions here that I wanted to put to you for when you actually finished reading. Um, so to be clear, I wanted you to read pages one to 31. I believe it was 31. I'll find it. Yeah, one to 31. Um, and at the bottom of page 31, it says, I just hope Mr. Copper was a reasonable man. And that's where you need to stop reading. Um, so these questions are about page, pages one to 31. So if you want to, if you haven't read it yet and want to avoid spoilers, um, this is when you would stop listening. If you have already read it and you want to know what the questions are, then um, I'll read them out loud for you. In what ways is Cottagers and Indians a traditionally structured play? In what ways is it not? Is there significance to the way the stage is set up? Since the characters have very little space to move around, how would you have them act? Can you see both sides of the argument happening? What do you make of Arthur's opening soliloquy? Do you know of any other First Nations traditions other than leaving tobacco? Which nation does it belong to? Do you consider Maureen's stance on the issue to be racist? Why or why not? Is it as easy as black and white? Is it contradictory to be using the medium of a play, a European concept, to teach an Indigenous concept? Why or why not? Can this still be Indigenous storytelling? So that's the first half of the questions that we're going to go over um, on Monday. Um, I'm going to read you the next set of questions for the next day, but we're not going to go over them until um, two weeks from now. So if you, again, if you haven't finished reading, then you should skip listening to these questions. So first of all, questions part two. Do you like Arthur's sense of humor? See page 35. What do you make of Arthur's land acknowledgement on page 39? What do you think of land acknowledgements in general? Are they necessary? What is their function? What do you think of Arthur smudging for Marine's husband? Page 49. What is food sovereignty? Why is Arthur planting the wild rice or manumen? What do you make of their reciprocal respect for the other's deceased family member? So those are some of the questions that I wanted to ask you and for you to think about. So um, if you have read everything and want to take a stab at some of these questions for Monday, you can come prepared in order to discuss some of these questions. Um, so thank you for listening. And um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. So thank you very much for coming to this lecture and I hope to see you all on Monday.